Welcome back, and in this video, I want to take a quick look at using audio clips. Audio clips function differently from patterns in that they represent an audio file that you can play along with your patterns in the playlist. To insert an audio clip, you can right-click a channel and select Insert, then from the list at the top, choose Audio Clip. A blank audio clip will be inserted. You'll notice the audio clip will be inserted into a separate audio clip section. You can change back to the unsorted or any other group by selecting it from the list of the lower left hand corner. Now an audio clip can be anything from a full song to a drum hit. It's up to you. The reason for using audio clips is because if you load a song into the sampler, number one, the full song will play out when you hit the play button, and the pattern that sample is on will either have to be drawn out the full length of the song, or you will have it begin to overlap itself, unless you use the cut itself function but then that defeats the purpose. Also, even if you made a pattern that was the length of the song and drew out one really long note and then inserted that pattern block into the playlist, you wouldn't hear any audio unless you started from the beginning of that pattern each time. Plus, you couldn't edit any parts. So an audio clip is the way to go for large or long samples. You can load an audio clip the same way that you would load a sample. Left click the open file icon and select your file. You can then left click on the clips area of the playlist to insert it. You'll notice that the waveform is drawn out, giving us an accurate view of the file. You can also see how you can begin playback from any point in the sample and you can hear the audio. This means that you don't have to start over from the beginning each time. So with our sample loaded as an audio clip and added to the playlist, you can delete it by right clicking on it. You can also move it left and right, or up and down, by left clicking and dragging. You can also resize the clip, which will change its playback speed, by hovering over the end of the clip until the cursor changes to the horizontal arrows, and then left clicking and dragging. If you aren't trying to stretch the track, you can select audio clips from the clip track focus options, and deselect stretch. This will allow you to resize the clip without changing the time. We also have an option for zero crossing, which means that if you slice the track in any way, FL Studio will automatically look for a zero crossing point in the audio for the slice to avoid clicks and pops. Also notice there is an arrow icon beside the name of the audio clip. Left clicking will give us some options. We can preview the track, which will play it. We also have a select source option, which will allow us to select from whatever other audio we have in the project. There's also an option to bring up the channel settings window, as well as an option to rename. The Make Unique option allows us to make a copy and insert it into the project. The purpose of this is because if you have more than one instance of the audio clip inserted, let's say it's a vocal sample, any adjustments you make to that sample, like stretching or slicing, will be applied to any other instances on the screen and any other future instances. Make Unique makes a new copy of the audio clip that you can manipulate without affecting any other instances except its own copies. Again, it makes a copy and places it into a new channel, so now we would have vocal sample number one and vocal sample number two. Any changes made to vocal sample number one will affect all instances of vocal sample one, and any changes made to vocal sample two will affect all instances of vocal sample two. Select Similar Clips will select any other instances. Select Region will give a list of regions to select, if any. The Chop item gives us some cool chopping options, which align to the Snap Selector settings. There are also some pre-made chop settings to choose from that will slice the sample into equal pieces or give stutter effects. Speaking of slicing, we can slice an audio clip with the Slicer tool by selecting it and then left-clicking and dragging. This is a great way to edit pieces in and out of the audio clip, as well as create effects. We'll take a closer look at this in the editing tutorial. Edit Sample will open the sample in Edison for more in-depth editing. Detect Tempo will open the Beat Detection tool, which gives us the option to accept the tempo FL Studio thinks it is, or to have it reanalyzed for even deeper detection. Fit to Tempo does just that. It will fit the audio clip to the tempo of the project based on the tempo that the beat detection tool gives. We also have options to automate panning and volume. Another thing I want you to pay attention to is that sometimes, with a long sample, you won't see any display when you add the clip to the playlist. A line will appear saying, no display, sample kept on disk. 
This is because the program is trying to save memory by streaming the sample from the hard disk rather than loading it into memory. You can bypass this by unchecking the Keep on Disk option in the channel settings. One last thing to point out is that you can select a row in the top portion of the playlist as well as in the pattern block section by activating the select tool and then left clicking off to the left side. This will select any data on that row. So we've just taken a look at audio clips, but just remember if you're using a sample that you want to use as more than a one shot, load it into an audio clip. This will allow for much easier editing and more efficient playback. In the upcoming videos, I want to take a look at pattern clips and automation clips, and then we'll take a look at composing and production. Until then, have fun and I'll see you next time.